Chapter 9. Yeah, everything goes real bad by the end. This chapter is meant to add two things. One, to generalize your classes and refactor things to make them work with more than just a sphere, but other kinds of objects in the future. Also, once that's done, we're going to add a plane object to our scene and replace those spheres on the sides that have been squashed with plane objects. I look through my code trying to figure out where I can generalize things. The toObjectSpace method will automatically transform array into object space based on the matrix inverse of the object, and it's just a convenience method for me to use. I already had separated getting the world space normal from the rest of my code way back when I created the getNormal method, which is overridden by all child objects of ray object. Materials also weren't a problem, already had that handled earlier on in my code. With how I implemented things, I'd have to expose them directly to test for everything that the book recommends, which felt like a lot more work than I needed, so I left them as they were. Another small test of types, just done for completeness. It's time to create my first object other than a sphere, a plane. Planes are really simple. They exist on the XZ plane in my program and have a normal of only one direction, that's up, regardless of where it's being sampled. And since all calculations or intersection tests are done in the local coordinate system, it's pretty much the only way it's going to be. There are three test cases with a plane. We intersect, we are parallel and on the plane for an infinite number of intersections, or we completely miss it by being parallel but off of the plane. We know we are on the plane if our Y values match. That is, if there's a difference of less than our floating point error epsilon value above and below the plane. I forgot to take the absolute value of the y value, so when I'm doing the check, I'm actually only doing it on one side. Here, I make that change, and now the test passes. The last part of the chapter has me create my own scene using planes. I break out Photoshop and sketch some planes to try to figure out where I should be positioning objects. This is the first time the book has completely given me the chance to make whatever I want, without any real guidance. So I take a little longer to position everything appropriately. But I make some silly mistakes early on, and that's what you're going to start to notice. All right, an all black image. Can you guess what's wrong? I'll give you a minute because it sure took me a few. I think maybe my camera's transform is bad and use the view transform method instead, but that just causes another error that I don't see yet when I pass in bad values that the method cannot use.
I try the old scene again. Except for the lighting, things seem to work. Guessed it? I forgot to put in a light source, making the entire scene completely black. However, now I have a null reference error. I finally noticed that I didn't implement shade calculations for planes in my child class. But really, there's no reason to override the lighting method, because lighting calculations are the same for all objects regardless of what they are. Fixing that mistake, I should get light, right? But I still have a black screen. I get rid of planes thinking this has to be the issue since that's the only thing that's new now. Still nothing. Time for some debugging. And that's where it hits me that on line 136, I'm getting a NAN, not a number, for my camera transforms. This is important because this wasn't a unit test in the book. What happens when you pass in bad vector values for positioning your camera? Specifically, when your direction vector and the up vector are on the same line. Not a number of values are going to happen, and they're going to blow everything up. I've never tested for NANs before, so I look it up and add it to my camera code to warn me when I'm given bad vector values. I should probably do a dot product of the up vector and forward vector as well to determine if the cross product is impossible. Well, that's not what I was looking for. Lighting is definitely wrong. I've made some changes to how I calculate lighting that is really messing things up. Maybe I'm transforming things incorrectly, possibly evaluating in the wrong space. Either way, I make an executive decision shortly afterwards. It's time to go back and implement all the tests I skipped before I started using NUnit. It's a bit of a blow to have to go back and re-implement seven chapters of testing, but if I'm going to get to the bottom of this, it needs to be done. And that's what you'll see me do in the next video if you were sad that I didn't properly unit test before. Chapter one through seven unit testing added to the project. See you next time. So long and goodbye.